Hello everyone, we're going to wait just a few more minutes to allow folks to join. Amy, we're up to 15 participants. Should we get started? I was going to wait a little bit. I was also trying to figure out, like, who was signed in as tag observability. Um, but given as they seem to have dropped, I thought we, we can go ahead and rock and roll. So. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Hello, everyone. It's June 6. Thank you for joining the TOC public meeting. Um, as a reminder, we are all uh, in all compliance with the antitrust policy notice for this meeting. And if you're here, you found where we're at. The meeting logistics are on the screen. They're also in the TOC repo. Uh, next slide. We have several TOC members here today, and we'll be doing some updates from the tags and then any additional questions for everyone at, towards the end of the call. So let's go ahead and get started with tags store up oh, projects we're, applying we're, to move we're, levels. We're going to move yeah. moving this one up, moving this one up to be able to make sure that we get a chance to be able to cover all of these. Um, yeah. Hooray. Yep. Uh, Artifact Hub is still an active review from Dave. Do you have any additional updates? I do not have any additional updates from before. I think we're still working through getting the due diligence together and ready to go. Awesome, thanks. Um, Strimzy, I don't see that Erin is on the call. I know that she is still working on it. Um, Cubeflow is in public comment. Flatcar is still in active review. Duffy, Nikita, or Katie, do you have any updates? I think on my side, we just have to, I think we have to sync and kind of move that thing forward again. Okay. Um, Ricardo, open yurt. I he don't see Ricardo. Today, so, yeah. um, but he's just picked this one up. So I expect further yep. updates from him. Yeah. So expect that one to be kicking off soon. Um, Justin is still working with GRPC on upcoming changes. Justin, do you happen to have an update? Uh, if we, you're... we have a meeting scheduled, I think. I can't remember exactly. Amy, when yes, is it? We do. It's yeah. The twentieth. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Uh Cryo, I believe, goes to voting today. Is that correct, Amy? That is correct. We are public comment moving to a vote. Awesome. Um, Kata is in public comment. Cilium is still with the uh, license scanning team and their licensing review. Falco, we're working on the project for some focus areas to continue to move them forward. And Istio is in voting, which I believe wraps up soon. Is that correct? We're real close. So uh, I'll, I'll be sending out like what votes are currently open today. Okay, awesome. TOC members, please keep an eye out on your email for open votes. All right, let's get started. Great to see so much movement here. Now we can get tech storage. All right. I'm sorry, do you mind if I just ask one thing on that last slide? Go ahead, Craig. Uh, there's a there's a quite a lot hidden in that last sentence there that says projects waiting for sponsors are on the meeting minutes doc. I did note yes. that there were 
three or four projects that have been waiting now what seems like six months. I just wondered if there is any plan on having more visibility into allocation of sponsors or when those will move forward. So um, that, in voting currently, and when they complete the votes, then those sponsors are then available to be able to come take on new projects. Now, I'm like, yes, <laughs> yeah. So I, I'll add on there, um, Craig. We do have the incubation and graduating projects black backlog um, on the TOC project boards. We're going in through those, trying to identify projects that have been in the queue the longest between the two of them. Um, we're actively working through things. All TOC members have been advised that as they are starting to wrap up and turn projects over to public comment, take a look in the backlog, look at which ones have been in there the longest, which ones align with background, if you have that um, luxury to be able to do that, depending on what we have, and then figure out which ones you're interested in taking on next. Um, I've already talked to several TOC members who have got a few projects that they're they're looking to pick up as soon as we we kick some of these out. I will let everyone know that in order to ensure that TOC members are not overcommitted and being distributed too thin amongst all the projects, we're trying to enforce a, a two project cap on TOC members um, to try to distribute the work as as thoroughly as we can and try to get these things moving forward. Um, so if you have any questions on a status, um, take a look at the, the project backlog boards. Um, we're trying to keep them up to date. We apologize for any uh, incorrect information that was on there in the past, but we're working through improving it. Thank you. Yep, not a problem. All right, tag storage. Okay, hello everyone. Um, so, uh, a few updates on uh, some of the projects. We've had quite a quite a bit of activity on a number of different projects uh, which are looking to join uh, the CNCF uh, and and presenting. Um, so I'll touch on those first. Cloud Native PG had previously applied um, for Sandbox and, and is going to be reapplying. They are a um, an operator, a Kubernetes operator for Postgres that's manages um, the entire life cycle of, of databases within um, within Kubernetes and also does things like um, replication and, and, and other failovers and high availability. So it's it's particularly interesting for moving stateful workloads into the Kubernetes environment. Um, Pelican is a very interesting project um, in that it is an exceptionally mature um, caching subsystem similar to memcached or, or redis for example um, and used to be um, part of the uh, code base at twitter due to some of the things that have been going on there the entire team has moved on and they've also open sourced their um, that that code base as, as a result and and has some it, it has some particularly interesting uh, cloud native applications. Um, so they're looking to uh, to consider joining a sandbox. Um, Xline is also very innovative. They are deploying a new um, consensus type protocol called CURP, which is uh, designed to remove some of the latency um, that we have uh, in, in things like um, the raft protocols uh, typically and their idea is to have a strong consensus uh, key value store, um, which also has um, an etcd compatible uh, API. So, so there are some interesting um, use cases for that there. Uh, and Huami Store is um, a local volume, uh, uh, a local volume manager, um, PVC kind of. Um, Product which uh, or project which allows uh, the migration of PVCs between between nodes as well as um, as well as local uh, storage management, which which again is kind of innovative because we haven't seen the sort of data movement aspect in any of the other projects like Karina, for example. Um, uh, other than the projects, uh, we've also got um, a bunch of work ongoing. Um, Around uh, some of the white papers that we're that we're working on, the uh, white paper on database patterns um, is uh, has 
a lot of content has been completed and we're now in a review phase and sort of plugging a few of the uh, a few of the gaps um, and that's that's actually what's taken um, the bulk of the um, the bulk of the of the work uh, so far um, and we continue to have uh, some upcoming presentations if anybody's interested to so join the next couple of calls um, uh, on projects for uh, we have a, a presentation around sustainability and storage um, which could uh, which could have some sort of wider interest um, and uh, another presentation on kup uh, which is a backup uh, project as well as some other projects coming up um, uh, some some project updates coming up like for Provigo. Um, and then finally um, uh, we want just want to remind everybody I've sent an email to the TOC mailing list that we're proposing um, Raffaele uh, Spazzoli to uh, join as a co-chair for the tag. Uh, Raffaele has been working with us for um, a number of years now and, and has, was previously a tech lead for the tag. He's authored a number of papers and, and been a presenter with us at KubeCon a few times um, and it's very, very highly recommended. So um, please send your plus ones in. Yes. When did you send that? Because I missed that. Uh, about two hours ago. Oh, okay. All right. Then so I haven't seen fresh. that. Then. Okay. No, no, perfect. <laughs> Brand new. Charlie. Okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. Brand new. Um, I will add that into the uh, co chair nomination. Like the, the vote's currently outstanding. We'll treat that like a vote. Excellent. Um, and, and, and Raphael would be replacing Quinton Hull, who's, who's sort of stepped down from the storage tag. Okay. Does anyone have any questions for tag storage? Okay. Um, I have one and then a request for the paper review that you have on database patterns. Um, did that go out on the TOC mailing list to solicit more reviewers? It has not, but we can do that. Okay, I would recommend that just to get more visibility on the on the work that this group has done. And then the use case template for storage projects. Are you all looking to contribute um, that template as an optional template on the contribute.cncf.io for those projects? Um, that was not something we actually discussed, but it's something we probably should consider actually that's a good point okay um i don't have any other questions All right next tag security hello so I, i'm pleased to announce that we have uh, proposed a nomination for our next co-chair this is replacing the uh, long standing and long serving brandon lum who's uh, who's just about finished with his term that is currently on the TOC mailing list for feedback. Uh, secondly, there is a proposal to spread out the chair terms. Via a nuance of uh, originally how additional co-chairs were added, um, we are due to have uh, a Radna finish within the next, uh, I, I think, month or so, um, which would mean two chairs rotating within very short succession. So this is a proposal to extend her term by another couple of months so there's at least three months between those rotations and just ease the the new chair into the role as supported by the tech leads who uh, have done a wonderful job so far we have some new publications so um, thanks to uh, all the italian speakers who have done a sterling job of translating the cloud native white paper v2 into italian uh, that is now finished and published as of uh, four days ago. And secondarily, we have a proposal for a Chinese translation underway that is currently inviting contributors and a number of security reviews on the way through. Uh, first of all, we have Pixie, which is um, uh, eBPF flavored, if people are interested to, uh, to jump in there. Um, we are looking for uh, again, additional security reviewers in there. Um, I think Justin Kapos will be leading that one for us. Uh, we also have Flatcar. Um, Flatcar is, is quite a large um, surface area, let's say. Being a full distribution, it is more than we would generally see with a, a specific cloud native application. However, we had an introductory meeting with the team 
and spoke about downscoping to very specifically the portions of the system um, which are higher risk where escalation of privilege might be more of a concern and of course on the understanding that it is a, a, a mature and well-used project um, so a little bit out of scope for a little bit beyond the scope of what we normally do um, but, but nevertheless uh, something we're willing to jump into there is a proposal for a fuzzing handbook so this is looking at some of the work um, especially uh, around the ADA logics uh, fuzzing across the, the CNCF um, project portfolio and we're looking probably to add this in to the supply chain uh, security white paper just as an additional piece um, again looking forward to a presentation on that over the next few weeks uh, and finally, Kubeflow um, are coming through as well. Um, I, I should add that we have been traditionally doing a cadence of meetings um, it, initially every week on US time zone. We, we then stood up uh, the, EMI, the EMEA meeting. Um, there has been some uh, diffusion of, um, of contributors across those two time zones. So the goal of, of the uh, of the tag is now to maintain that weekly cadence in North America on the North American time zone, while also um, maintaining the two weekly cadence of the EMEA uh, team, which has um, probably half to uh, to a third of the number of contributors. Um, but as some people move around the world, they kind of switch between different projects. So uh, trying hard to avoid split brain making sure everything is well documented and we have rigorous meeting notes to uh, to mitigate that. Thanks, Andy. Anyone have questions for Tag Security? No, I just wanted to uh, thank the Tag Security for picking up the security reviews for the projects because Pixie, as you know, has already um, presented in the Tag Observability and we've been working with closely with the team um, for, you know, getting them lined up and ready for um, review by the TOC uh, for incub uh, incubation uh, status. So thank you, Andy, for, uh, and to the tag community, security community. Ricardo's got a second on that. Thanks for picking up that car. Um, Andy, while we have you, a uh, quick question. I, as I understand it, you all are always in need of security reviewers to support and assist this because it is a volunteer driven activity. I assume that is still the case. And if so, is there any security reviewer resources for individuals that may not have a security background but are interested in learning more and how they can assist tag security in reviewing these projects security posture? There are indeed, and thank you for asking. Uh, we have security reviewer guidelines. Um, I will drop these into the chat now as well. I would also recommend sending out a message on the TOC mailing list with the open call for security reviewers and a link to what you just dropped in chat. Hopefully we can get some more uh, community members interested in this space. Yes, I appreciate the nudge. There's one more thing in this space, which we, we have considered. Um, we, we tend to experience um, individuals being involved in contributing uh, in, in their um, line of business interest, let's say. And, uh, and we have wondered if, if we can open that up more broadly and ask people if they can contribute maybe to the preceding or the following um, review once they have a feel for the way that we pursue the the, the minutiae of, of how we undertake the thing. So um, it's an open discussion in tag security right now, but yes, we are very keen to uh, bolster the roster of, of security individuals. Uh, in fact, uh, Emily, thank you for calling that out because I just wanted to uh, call out that the, secure, the open telemetry project, uh, which I actively work on, uh, is uh, we just created a security work group uh, uh, which is you know related to open telemetry and looking at um, security use cases for observability. And again, Andy, I think perhaps you know those uh, two team groups can collaborate to support the tag uh, security. So I'll I'll put it, I'll get the word out for sure. That would be fantastic. Thank you. Sure. Thanks, Alalita. That's great. Uh, next up, Tag Runtime. All right. Uh, hello, John. 
I don't know where are the projects and presentations, <laughs> you know, like uh, I think uh, there is something went wrong with the presentation. Uh, so let me try to find another. Okay. This happens. Uh, it's... Drop it in chat when you when you get to it. That's fine. Uh, actually, I can see it here, so I'm not sure why it's not. Anyway, the room might not be rendering today. <laughs> yeah, no words. So um, uh, going to the project and presentation, uh, the, uh, we had uh, we had a couple of projects that in graduation uh, in graduation process, and uh, they are in public comment uh, um, the CADA and CRIO. Um, now the queue flow uh, it's still in initial uh, in, in the review as well. Uh, we are working on that, and we reached out to another uh, project, which is a Slim tool, uh, Toolkit. We didn't hear back from them yet. Uh, hopefully, they can present uh, soon. Uh, moving to the workloads and the Kubernetes um, uh, projects. Um, so uh, Carmada uh, is um, uh, has has already presented in the tag runtime, and uh, they are waiting for a sponsor from the TOC. Um, and we had two sandbox uh, projects that have been accepted, which is Kepler and the Cube Service Stack. Uh, Razor as well. We are working uh, to uh, make sure they, you know, like they already uh, covered all uh, the information that the TOC uh, asked uh, asked them to provide. And uh, yeah, we have um, in the next meeting we have the Cube Clipper uh, project, which is a management uh, system, uh, Kubernetes management system. They will present on June fifteenth. Uh, moving to the activities. Uh, First thing uh, we wanted to um, we wanted to um, uh, you know like discuss here or you know like uh, letting you know that the session in KubeCon EU was very productive and um, um, the co-chairs have a lot of uh, successful one-on-one um, -on -one talking and people were so interested uh, on you know, meeting them and the talking it, uh, to them during the session so. The tag is planning to have another one uh, for Cube uh, in A, and uh, hopefully we can have more elaborate, elaborating uh, sessions as well. Uh, we will try to uh, plan for this, and uh, we will let you know once we have a draft plan. Um, another two uh, working groups uh, still in progress, uh, which are the ML Ops and the OS Working Group. Uh, we didn't have lots of, uh, um, you know, like progress in, in this yet, uh, but because we have like the WASM working group, uh, we're working on the WASM working group, uh, hopefully the charter, the drafted charter is almost ready, so we will send it uh, for TOC review, uh, hopefully this week. And uh, we already uh, nominated uh, the co-chairs and the team leaders uh, based on uh, people interested and um, of course we took lots of other uh, um, uh, other uh, other factors into our considerations and uh, we had a meeting already um, uh, uh, like time and date and hopefully once we have the DOC review and everything is good we can start uh, to kick off the first meeting for was a working group and uh, yeah it was it was so you know, like uh, so happy to to see like the WasmCon uh, is, is the thing now, and it will happen soon. So it it sync up with you know, the working group. Hopefully, we can do more uh, more work together. Uh, moving back again to the patch system initiative, uh, the team had a pretty consistent um, uh, uh, chunk of work, and uh, they are uh, making a good progress to. Uh, to reach to the landscape uh, phase, which uh, which is uh, pretty uh, excited, and uh, for the other working group, the IoT and COD, uh, we didn't have uh, much updates on on this working group. Hopefully, uh, uh, we can have something to share with you in the future. That's it. fantastic. You all have been very busy this past yes. month. <laughs> Any yeah. questions? For a couple of months, I don't know what's happening, but you know, like lots of projects, lots of uh, uh, events, which is happy, happy thing. Yep. Any questions for Tag Runtime? All right. I certainly don't have any. You all are doing great work. Very busy. Next. Ah, 
and now it's loaded. Tag observability. All right. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, I wanted to kind of run through some of the really cool stuff that we've been doing in the tag uh, observability. And, and the first and, and foremost, uh, I think thank you to the TOC for approving our request for a work group on the uh, query language standard um, work that you know different uh, groups are interested in Netflix, eBay, as well as Apple. Uh, we have been uh, looking at some of the use cases where convergence of multiple query languages in the industry for observability are leading to more discussion around um, how there could be a baseline, which is a standard. Um, set of, um, uh, again, just standard set of syntax, right? So based on that, uh, the query, lang uh, query language work group has been set up. Um, we will reuse the CNCF uh, tag observability time on the day, on the weeks when the tag meeting is not held. So the tag meeting typically is on the first and third Tuesdays and the work group um, for query language uh, discussions will be held on the second and fourth. We have already had the first discussion. A uh, lot of folks attended, uh, very good representation, both from end users as well as from uh, different vendor um, teams that have been um, involved. And that's very exciting because again, this is an, and I stated the, uh, work group goals on the right hand side as well as the non goals. Um, obviously, we are not looking at defining a formal standard or implementations that's up to the uh, if new projects spin up based on that that's up to the projects to do uh, what we want to focus in on in this work group is really looking at a variety of uh, use cases capturing you know what some of the end user uh, pain points are and the use cases which really require complex um, queries often for observability data, and just looking at telemetry models and establishing and documenting that. We also plan to interview uh, query language designers from different um, groups um, within the CNCF ecosystem as well as from different vendors, and this and also survey, um, you know, multiple end user um, groups who have been super interested in, first of all, providing feedback and also hope to inform the diversity of observability use cases that exist, right? So again, super exciting. Um, this is something that uh, will be ongoing. Uh, so again, please get the word out if folks are interested, whether that is um, security use cases or um, uh, KHS specific use cases or others, again, um, this does intersect uh, and your feedback would be invaluable. Um, just wanted to call out a couple of projects on the observability side again, thanks to the tag security for doing, you know, conducting, starting the security review um, for Pixie. Uh, we are still awaiting uh, TOC guidance on um, assignment of a sponsor for starting to review Pixie for um, incubation. And the second project, which is also in the wings that has just started is uh, open cost, which kind of falls under the observability domain uh, because of uh, a lot of the metrics that are collected um, <clears throat> for cost management and uh, uh, configuration management, which is typically you know, an overlapping area with observability. Meetings and highlights, we do have uh, pretty good uh, participation in the uh, meetings that we have twice a week, uh, twice a month, I should say. And uh, Matt, did you want to go and deep dive into that? We had a super cool uh, speaker yeah. series well, talk. <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you. Um, I, I think over the last few years, I've built up enough negative karma with talking too much. So I will try to be brief, bright, and gone in this case. Um, but yeah, last um, uh, in our last meeting, the video has just been posted. Um, uh, Ryan Wright from a company called That Dot came uh, to talk about an MIT open source project called Quine.io. It is a streaming graph interpreter. 
I've mentioned this in the past, and we finally got him to come. Um, I highly recommend giving the talk a watch. Uh, giving the talk a watch. It's about thirty-five minutes, or uh, and it starts with the theory uh, of observability that goes back quite a bit deeper than and, and older uh, than you might think. Um, beyond uh, predating kind of control theory and and in, in, in with its roots in philosophy, um, you know about how we observe the world around us and all of that. Uh, but really, the focus is on streaming graph interpreters, which are, in a nutshell, something like Spark or something that would sit between two streaming pipelines of events, and it, uh, it it doubles up little events and makes much bigger events out the other side. The critical difference being that there are no timing windows, because rather than all of the events that need to be matched up as they come streaming in, um, being bounded by how much memory or storage you have on a machine, uh, rather uh, it's a stateful, durable graph database uh, backing that sort of buffer, if you will. Uh, so streaming graph interpreters have a lot of applications, I think, uh, in uh, ob observability, in particular cloud native observability due to the high cardinality and the nature of, of Kubernetes observability. So the talk ends with a demo of using Quine to understand what's happening in a cluster. Uh, so um, that's that. Cool. Um, and Matt, thank you for uh, diving deep in that. Uh, again, for those of you who are interested in streaming graphs, this is a super cool talk. Um, I just wanted to call out uh, attention to a uh, long-term pending request from the Open Telemetry Project. Again, trying to figure out you know, what is the best process for reaching out to the CNCF legal team as well as the TOC for uh, reviews of um, different licensing requests or community requests that come up, right? And and we did file a service desk ticket from Open Telemetry a while back, and it's been a few months. Uh, we have not heard back on the ticket from the legal team. So maybe, Amy, you can guide us in terms of what the process is there. So there's a couple different things going around. Um, I think for licensing requests, it's best to be able to use the foundation repo, um, but we can take this one offline. Mostly because okay. there's a lot of different pieces running around in here. So sure, it's like, sure. find me. Cool. Okay, we'll do. <laughs> Thanks, Amy. Awesome. Uh, and that's all uh, we had for the update. Haven't we? <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Alalita. Any questions for tag observability? Okay. Uh, next. Thanks. Tag environmental sustainability. Hello. Um, so we organized uh, actually a while back, I think a month ago, um, a getting started meeting, um, which was quite nice. We had a couple of new folks, I think around 10, around 10 new faces. And we will um, work on those slides um, over time and then have again getting started meetings after each major conference so every time we expect a lot of new um, contributors or new folks interesting in the tech we will organize a getting started meeting um, we published a blog post i think two weeks ago um, it should be published today um, also on the cncf blog so we have it on our website already and it should also be published uh, today or, to tom or tomorrow. It's about uh, KubeCon and um, Cloud Native at KubeCon, basically. And we had a couple of sections in the blog post where we had interview style questions and folks from the tag answered those questions. Um, so I think this was a very nice idea or, or, or thing to um, get folks from the uh, tag involved in a blog post um, they can quickly fill out uh, a form, answer those questions, and they appear in the blog post. And we also organized or invited the uh, author of the Scafandra project. Uh, Scafandra is a similar tool or project uh, as Kepler, but it has not this. Um, it's not bound to uh, Kubernetes as Kepler is. It's uh, it is uh, just like a resource which you can deploy uh, anywhere but it's governed under a different um, organization, so a different foundation. Um, so this was a very good um, um, demo for us to know a little bit more about the tool itself, but also to um, get a connection to to the author and um, also to, to the other foundation potentially. Um, we published a couple of months ago and we've talked about it um, the Cloud Native Sustainability Landscape document. And um, it has been 
um, translated to Korean, which is very nice. So you see there's some some eyes on the document and um, with with time, potentially we will also include more different languages, but this is like on like if if a contributor steps up uh, and has interest, then um, we we have the support and we are happy to include more languages. There was also, and we have been talking in the tag about this for quite some time because at the moment, a lot of our efforts are focused around communication and and so on. So we've been um, starting um, and creating an issue about the working group around communication, which I think is, is a very good step. Um, the issue is, I think has a lot of thumbs up already, but um, it's still under discussion, I think. Um, so we will, I think, wrap this up soon, soonish. Um, there's also been an effort to um, maybe organize a hackathon at the next KubeCon. Um, this is uh, led by, by Max. We organized last week a meeting um, with some folks who are interested in this effort to discuss uh, maybe different projects which we can, which which are a fit for a hackathon. Um, so I think this is very interesting. There's also another effort uh, about organizing a cloud native week of cloud native sustainability. And the idea is that we use the um, community groups. So we have in the CNCF all those chapters, they organize meetups and uh, we have this, this network. And the idea is that we leverage this network and that we um, organize in, in a particular week, the second week of October, all around the globe, uh, cloud native meetups around the topic of sustainability. And we already have over 20 um, meetups interested or organizers interested. So it looks to be quite, quite of an interesting event. Um, we will have in the next weeks and months um, some session around organization so we can support those local meetups um, in the best best way we can. Um, so very excited about that. We have also invited the Green Software Foundation. Um, this is not on the slide here, but I updated. <laughs> I updated, I think the slide's a little bit late. But um, we have invited the Green Software Foundation to join our next call tomorrow, um, which I think is very interesting. Um, if, they are obviously a lot have a lot of expertise as well in the in the um, sustainability space. So having uh, like a stronger bound to them, I think makes sense. We also um, were thinking about maybe um, having like a role, like an ambassador role that some of somebody from the tag is joining the Green Software Foundation calls and giving us an update. So we are kind of uh, have like a better um, loop or better understanding what's going on in their software foundation and their um, foundation. But um, maybe this is like something for the future right now. I'm not sure if somebody has has time for to do that. Um, also, we have been working on refining governance and guidelines. We um, pushed a new process around reviewing blog posts. This has been a problem um, a couple of months ago when we first had um, a blog post a submission and we we noticed that we are missing guidelines how to review it and um, it was a little bit messy. And now I think we have a very interesting process, maybe something we can also um, document in the best practices effort. Uh, there's like another issue open yeah. under the TUC. So maybe this could yep. be interesting there too. And the last two things, we have been also talking about tag roles and like a leadership ladder because some tag members are interested in, in moving moving up roles and have different leadership um, roles. And we've been also talking about the host playbook. So how to organize a meeting and so on. Awesome. Thanks so much, Leo. Um, for those of you that are interested in learning more about that hackathon, definitely check out the issue link. There is a lot of great information and discussion on there. I think the folks in Tag Observability uh, might be interested in checking that out. So uh, 
Leo, thank you so much. Any questions for Tag Environmental Sustainability before we move on? Okay, next. Tag Contributor Strategy. Hello, everyone. Uh, we've made uh, really good progress. Uh, Dave Sudia in particular has made really good progress on revitalizing the maintainer circle. So this has been exciting to see. So we held one with, um, with Nate and Lee uh, just a little over a week ago. And we have one coming up on community management with Paris Pittman on the 28th. So we'll be announcing that one soon. But if you want to hold it on your calendar, that would be great. We also have some really interesting things coming out of the mentoring working group that are pretty exciting. So uh, uh, Catherine Paganini has been working with a university at, near Washington, DC, which is um, a university, Gallaudet, Gallaudet, I'm not sure how to say it, um, which yeah, is just, yeah, Gallaudet, just, thank yes. you. Um, so it's it's a, a university for um, for the deaf and hard of hearing, and so she's working with them and meeting with a professor to to look at how we can make our communities more accessible to um, contributors uh, in the space. So if you know any community members who are deaf, hard of hearing, or fluent in uh, American Sign Language, um, and who are maybe interested in collaborating with us on this effort, um, have them reach out to us at Tag Contributor Strategy. We'd love love to hear them and their experiences and get more people involved in this this new initiative. We're also making um, really good progress on um, in that the work that Jay Talema is doing with the Maori in New Zealand and some some work with uh, government initiatives to to help them move into careers in the cloud native space. So it's part of kind of a national national program to get more more native Maori people into um, IT careers, and in particular, in our case, the CNCF. So that also is really, really exciting to see. Um, on the governance side, we've got some governance reviews in progress. So we're doing governance reviews for uh, Istio and Telepresence right now. Um, so, so like the last group, we updated our slides a little late. So if you go back to the slides later, um, you can see that we've added a few things to the general section. In particular, we have new tech leads. Um, so we have Ali Ok and Rian Kleinhans, who are stepping in to fill Carolyn's very big shoes um, after we, we lost her. So they have been stepping up and doing a lot of really great work within, within the tag. And so we wanted to, to recognize that by moving them into tech lead positions. In particular, Ali has been doing a ton of work on the contribute.cncf.io website. And in particular, um, upgrading some Hugo versions and working on how to migrate some things that uh, were unfortunately running out of uh, Carolyn's GitHub accounts. And so we're, he's in the process of working to, to sort that out and working with some folks at the CNCF. Um, and then uh, Rian has been taking the lead and working on our tag contributor strategy roadmap so that we have a better feel for what we're, what we're working on, what's coming next, and how people can get involved. So there's also a lot of great work happening there. And then our friendly monthly reminder that any CNCF project is welcome to come and talk to us if you want some help with governance or building your contributor strategy, growing your contributors. So feel free to drop into any of our meetings, Slack channels, mailing lists, uh, you know, if your projects need some help. Any questions for the tag? Um, <clears throat> Don, I think uh, I had a question about um, getting the contrib tag contributor strategy you know team more involved in the projects the opposite way that is can we invite you for example open telemetry and you know is a very large project um can we invite you or you know folks from the tag contributor strategy to come and speak to the to the gc and the tc for example right because we have a regular meetings but Typically, what I've noticed is that most projects don't go to the tech contributor strategy. It's kind of isolated and separated out. Uh, yeah. Maybe, you know, having more uh, presentations into the projects themselves might be, uh, you know, useful to get more folks involved. Yeah, because we, we, we have a whole team. We have a whole community team that, you know, and a group that works on the project itself. And 
um, there's a lot of activity that comes out of that community group, but they could benefit from, you know, actually uh, working with the contributor strategy group more closely. Yeah, we'd, we'd certainly be open to that. I would say reach out to us on, on our Slack channel or the, the mailing list um, uh -huh. with when the meetings are and maybe some some idea of some of the challenges you're facing that you'd like for us to talk about. And then we'll we'll see if we can find somebody who can who can come into to your meetings as well. Awesome, awesome. Thank you. Yeah. And you know, projects that are having particular issues or want to review on something, or maybe they're updating their governance and want some advice, are also always welcome to just file issues and tag contributor strategy, and we can deal with those um, asynchronously. So you don't you don't have to pop into a meeting if you if you've got a question. We can we can uh, deal with some of those via via issues as well. Okay, that that makes sense, Don. I mean, again, all all good. It's just more that uh, you know there are often um, a lot of uh, discussions. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the community repos, for example, on Hotel are very active. Lots yeah. of different discussions happening there, but they don't, you know, really they stay centered in the in on the project itself, right? And and yeah. uh, folks typically don't intersect. So I'd love to see more uh, collaboration there. Yeah, that, that's a good idea. Thanks. No, totally. Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions for Tech Contributor Strategy? Okay, um, I have a recommendation for everyone. If you are a tag chair or technical lead or a maintainer of a project or interested in becoming a maintainer for a project at some point in the future, highly recommend going to that community management session with Paris Pittman. Keep an eye out um, from Tag Contributor Strategy for information and details on that. Even though it may not be immediately relevant to something you're working on, there are always good sessions to understand what is going on in the movie and the rest of the community, some of the community concerns um, that different maintainers are encountering. So highly recommend that. All right, next. Yeah, up. and there's a maintainer circle Slack channel, which is yes. where all the announcements get made. So if you're not already on that, that's a great way to get notified when the meeting gets scheduled. Definitely. Thanks, Don. All right, next up. App delivery. Yes, ma'am. Here I am. Um, so I'll just walk through this. Uh, we have opened an issue for chair elections. Um, I'm not a chair right now, but I nominated myself. I'm kind of de facto chair for right now. So I'm definitely looking for more contributors. Uh, I'm a little concerned that I'm the only one that's nominated myself there. I know it's a big domain. Um, maybe some of the leaders from some of the related groups want to like K Native or things like that, want to propose themselves. So yeah, check that out. Um, we do have a project presentation with Litmus Chaos coming up. Uh, so testing frameworks currently fall under our purview. Um, we had a discussion with CD events from CDF a few weeks ago, and I just wanted to make sure you all saw that. Um, we tried to identify ways we could support CDF and CD events, uh, Continuous Delivery Foundation, for those that don't know, um, and CD events is a major project from them. Um, yeah, we're pursuing a couple of things. I think they want, one of the things they asked was about uh, patterns for integrating events and reacting to them. And I kind of said, I, our serverless working group, which I always have my eye on, um, most about cloud events, um, asked them to talk with them some too. Uh, continuing through the list, uh, our WeGs. So WeGs, just what I call working groups. Um, artifacts. Uh, so we've had some productive couple meetings after our you know initial back and forth asynchronously. Um, the charter is is ready uh, for review. I opened them, uh, the the, so the lead, well one of the leaders opened up uh, PR in the tag repo and I opened the thing in the talk today. So take a look at that, see what you think. Um, we and there's a lot of different examples of forming WeGs. So. Uh, and there were a lot of opinions in the meetings too. So <laughs> and I'm sure there will be more on the PR. So comment there if you want it changed or need more info. Um, we did want, I'll bring up this ask because I'm probably going to open a service desk ticket for it. Um, we probably need a Git repo because um, we're gathering media types for artifact schemas. Uh, so I'll probably open a service desk ticket for that soon rather than 
it'll be better than the folks going and just creating a GitHub org um, is the feedback. Uh, yeah, this Ouija plat complicated because if I if I see it right, this is asking for being able to help gather OCI pieces as well. Um, media types, yeah. So it applies. I, I'm, to I'm, I'm worried we're going to be crossing the streams here, and I want to be more clear about it. But we can we can take it offline. Yeah, we've been discussed. OCI has been involved in these discussions, and some of the OCI folks are in the meetings. And we actually put in the charter explicitly how we intend to relate to OCI. Um, they're pretty supportive of it. It's, you know, the work we're doing is bottoms up effort. It's not to set a spec. It's more to gather. Just the fact is that people don't have the motivation to register all these media types with IANA. So we're trying to bottoms up, uh, gather them together, find conventions, and eventually it might affect, it might affect OCI artifacts. 2.0 or OCI image spec, even 2.0. There's some discussions within OCI. It's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool way to partner with them because they're mostly on the spec side and we're mostly on the software side. It's kind of how I see it. Um, okay, continuing down the list, Ouija platforms. Yes, Ortelius, it's part of Ortelius, but it's the same folks. I mean, Emporus is interested in. Um, content addressable uh, discoverability for all things, but I'm encouraging them to focus only on software artifacts. And that is actually how OCI works internally. It, it's just content addressable. So um, yeah. Yeah, there's, the, there's always the CDF and CNCF and that kind of stuff, OCI. Let me move on to the next one. Um, Ouija platforms. So here is a lot of stuff in development because I need to push it along a little bit more. Um, the maturity model, uh, some of our folks are, are, are in depth on that. We want to push it forward, maybe have it ready by Chicago. Korean translation, I think the same person that did uh, the environmental sustainability did ours, but we haven't quite figured out how to get it merged in there yet. If somebody wants to, it's, it's really almost done. It just, it's the Hugo figuring out how to negotiate that. The platform survey is live. Um, we haven't gotten a ton of responses. And to be honest, we haven't really promoted it. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just we need some help if folks want to help promote. Uh, it's been on my backlog to write a blog post about it and explain what we're doing. Um, but I haven't done that yet. Newsletter and marketing, same thing. Actually, this is really good. I just talked with some of the folks that are interested in this. And we do have a few people that want to in a vendor neutral way, share, you know, information about application development and delivery on Kubernetes. Uh, and so they're pursuing ways to share, you know, the stuff that comes to our tag and some of the projects that we're working on, working on like potato head. Um, I did want to share this last bit, which is within from the platforms group, which is, you know, probably accomplished a lot of the core of what it wanted to do. Um, but we want to continue somehow pursuing um, synergies, standards, conventions, reduction of complexity um, for platform APIs, you know, the ways that you actually call the platform for portals where there is some confusion in the industry about what portals are meant to do, things like backstage, um, and secrets bindings management, which comes up freaking every conversation I have. But it's, you know, there's not that much money in it, frankly, I think, in solving the problem. It's hard to get everyone together on. There's about 20 different ways. So that's definitely been an hour. Uh, you know, we're trying to find ways to, to tackle that. There's are open issues. So if you're passionate about it, um, that's what we're looking for is passionate people to, to uh, simplify these domains. Um, last thing, KubeCon Chicago, everyone else mentioned it. So I'll mention ours too. Um, we've run, you know, project meetings for the tag at the past couple KubeCons and they were really good for facilitating um, learning about ideas coming from each project, uh, you know, some cross-pollination, collaboration. Um, I have noticed that the pre-day events are proliferating. Uh, they seem to be as twice as many in Amsterdam as Detroit. Maybe there were much more before the pandemic. I'm not really sure. Um, but we're, I was thinking about a lot of those are app delivery projects. And so I was thinking about trying to coordinate that a bit. Most of them are only an hour or something anyway, um, so that we can all attend each other's and learn from each other's. Um, so maybe that will transition 
uh, into that. I just wanted to share that with with folks. So you, it's five months, but it's it comes up faster than you expect. Yeah, it's five months from today. Um, I think Josh, that's very helpful because um, again, I've uh, you know we've had the same issue where there are project meetings on the pre day at Coupon and. Typically, they're all at the same time, so you end up not attending the others. <laughs> yeah, and in fact, you know, I was kind of thinking, because I don't know if you all have heard, but there's a proposal for an app developer day on that day, and I was thinking about how that fits with the project meetings. Does that negate the need for them? But I've actually been thinking, like, that event is towards end users to the, you know, the people that come in and want to learn, whereas this, these project meetings... I mean, I, certainly if end users want to come, that probably indicates that they're pretty powerful end user anyway, but it's more oriented towards the project maintainers and the leaders to introduce them to each other. Yep. I mean, both. I think both and both are valuable. Mm -hmm. um, it's just having them on the same day. We have the same issue with observability also because we have the observability day on the same day as the project meetings and everything else. So it's typically <laughs> difficult to pick. So uh, knowing that that's difficult and having done the schedule a few times for KubeCon, um, if you both could take a few moments and type something up and paste it in either the TOC channel or the Tag Chairs channel um, concerning like scheduling conflicts associated with KubeCon, and we'll make sure that that is sent over to the events team and the co-chairs for KubeCon so that they're aware and mindful of it when they're building out the schedule. Sure, Emily, we can definitely, Josh and I can coordinate for sure. That would be fantastic. And, and just file an issue on TOC repo? I, that... Just post it in the Slack channel. I'll, I'll okay, direct okay. them to it. Awesome. Will do, will do. Thank you. Cool. Any other questions for Tag App Delivery? Okay. Any other questions? We've got three minutes. Okay. Um, I appreciate everyone's attendance today. I look forward to seeing you all next month with some more awesome updates. Please have a safe, happy, and healthy week, everyone. Good to see you all. We do sandbox review next week. So new sandbox projects. It's closed meeting. Cool. Awesome. We'll, we'll publish it. We'll publish it after it's it's done and votes will open. So hooray. Thanks. Thanks, Amy. Thanks, Amy. Thank you all. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Bye.